This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by former world champion Chris Algieri. Chris, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. Glad to hear it. So I guess let's get right into it. Why is Conor Ben the right fight for you at the right time? Um, because it's, you know, it's a, it's a big fight. We've got a big fight feel for this. Um, it's an opportunity to go across the pond, which I've always wanted to. So that's that's a, uh, a nice little caveat to, to the whole equation. Um, and also, you know, it, it's a fight I can, I, I can win and I see a lot of opportunities and ways for me to, to get the victory and it propels me into, into bigger fights for, you know, uh, a, a while ahead. And is this a confirmation that you're going to be competing going forward at 147? What you were only just over 140 last time. No, no, I can go either way, you know, and it's, it's, uh, you know, this, this opportunity came up. So, you know, I, like I said, I've, I've been able to fight in both. I'm undefeated at 140. So if, if there's an opportunity for me to go back down there, I will. So this is definitely not confirming that I'm going to stay at, at, at Welter. Now, I wanted to ask you, you, you clearly hit hard enough to gain respect. I think Tommy Coyle could testify to that. But you're not known as a one-punch knockout artist. And there's mm -hmm. been a number of questionable decisions uh, by the judges in the UK in the last year or so. Is that... Is that on your radar and is it something that concerns you? I'm getting more concerned because everybody keeps asking me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but no, 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 no. It, it's, you know, listen, I, I, I like to think of, uh, I'm a very positive person. I like to think that if you are watching the fight and watching what I do in there and understand the sport, if I'm winning rounds, I'm winning rounds and I'm going to win the fight. But it is something that is going to be in my mind and I want to put an exclamation point on each and every round and make sure I put it in the bank. But at the same time, like you said, I hit hard enough and I've hurt everyone I've ever fought, you know, and that's, that's something that we're going to go out and, and look to do and look to do damage. And if there's opportunities for me to capitalize and, and, you know, and hurt my opponent or get my opponent out of there, I'm going to go for it. And that's, you know, I, I especially, I've been showing that uh, later in my career, you know, I hurt, I hurt the last guy bad that I, that I, I fought. I tried to finish him. I almost got him. He had never been stopped. You know, Tommy, obviously um, I was able to, able to stop him and really put the pressure to get that fight ended. So, um, you know, I think that this stage of my career, you know, the powers come along and, and, and I'm much more able to capitalize on that. Tell us your thoughts on Conor Ben as a fighter and also the level of opposition he's been fighting recently. Yeah, I think, uh, I think he's a very talented, talented young man and, and he's got a great career ahead of him. Um, you know, his, his, his path thus far has been carefully curated and, you know, they have plans for him. I never had a career like that. I had to, I had to scrap from day one and, you know, was the underdog even in my first 10 fights for a lot, oftentimes. So uh, we have very, very different backgrounds in terms of how we got to where we are, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. This is, this is boxing and all that matters is, is your next fight. Now you haven't been probably as active as you'd have liked to have been over the last few years, but you've kind of got a second career as well as a nutritionist. Just, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got more than a second career, you know, <laughs> I'm working as a professor down here in South Florida, teaching uh, nutritional neuroscience. I'm working as a broadcaster, which you guys I'm sure see me quite a bit. And then as a, as a nutritionist, which I'm moving away from uh, working as a nutritionist, especially with, with fighters, it's just too con time consuming. And I'm do doing it more as a uh, speaking engagements and, and, and as a, as an actual professor and teacher at the college level. How do you balance the training for your boxing career alongside your academic obligations? Great question. And, and really it's because it's a lifestyle. I don't, I don't, I never take really time off. I'm never really off. Um, the intensity of my workouts may change. You know, the, the goal will change, but my training volume doesn't change much. You know, I, if I'll fight on December 11th and I'll come back to the States and I'll be back on the road and working out, you know, that week, that's just, that's just the way that I've always carried myself. And that's probably why I'm still here at 37 years old. Um, you know, so for me, this is how I've always done it. I've always burned the candle at both ends and it's, it's worked out well. I figured out how to, uh, how to balance that throughout my whole life and career. Has there been any point over the last say two, three years where you've considered moving away from active boxing and focusing purely on the nutrition and, and uh, academic side? Uh, only during the pandemic. That's the only time in my, in my, my career up until this point where I, I really, really contemplated thinking that it was, it was over because I just didn't know how long it was going to last. I didn't want to, you know, losing, losing important time 
Um, and I was close to, to packing in. I, actually, I spoke to Tommy Coyle about that. Him and I were, we've, we've stayed, uh, we've stayed friendly since, since fight night and we speak here and there. And, uh, I had told him that I, I, I might pack it in because this, this pandemic thing is, uh, is a real drag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for all of us, but yeah, mm-hmm. I'm guessing more so for, for you guys. Um, you said earlier that people keep asking you about the judges. I'm going to ask you something else that you've probably heard more than once today already. Uh, Amir Khan, a former opponent of yours, uh, finally mm-hmm. now fighting Kel Brook. That was a fight that was talked about back when you were competing against Amir. What, what do you make of that one finally coming together? I like it. I like it. I, I think it's still a good fight. You know, I think, uh, you know, I've said this in, in a couple of different interviews already, you know, they're, they're both past their, their best, but that's okay. They're both there. So, you know, they're making the fight happen. Um, we see this all too often in boxing fights that we want and clamor for, for a long time end up happening down the line when they probably should have happened earlier, but it is what it is. I think, I I still think it's a good fight. I still think it's a good matchup and, you know, bad blood always makes a fight that much more interesting. So let's do it. What are your kind of future ambitions? Should everything go your way on December the 11th against Conor Ben? You know, I've always been an opportunity guy when things come up. Um, I don't like to pass up on things, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for my legacy at this point. You know, it's, it's, it's toward the end of my career. I, I've, I've got a couple more big fights left in me, and I just want to maximize them. I want to maximize that time. I want to maximize the magnitude. Um, so that's another reason why this fight is, is uh, a perfect timing. So is it kind of two weight world champion? Would that be the legacy point that you want to tick or, you know, best New York fighter of your generation? What's the, what's the driving force? Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, legacy is, is there. Two, two, weight, weight, uh, two weight world champion, is that's knocking on the whole thing. So, you know, really making a lasting impression in this sport is, is, has been important to me for my entire life. I think I have done that up until now. So now it's just how much more can we push it? We push the limit and can, can get myself out there. Looking at Connor's recent um, opponents and also the fact that he was calling for fights with the likes of Khan and Brooke before they agreed to face each other. It seems like you've been brought in, certainly from his team's perspective, as the veteran former world champion as another notch um, on his record, if I can mix my metaphors there. Mm-hmm. Um, why are you not that guy? Why are you not Adrian Granados and the other? I mean, Granados not a former world champion, but you get the point, the, the other guys that he's been fighting recently. Yeah, I mean, the simple answer is I'm not a part of his story. He's a part of mine. I'm out there to, to, to knock off the, you know, one of the young stud up and coming guys. Uh, we've seen this t- countless times over the years, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Tito Trinidad, how many, how many young undefeated guys did Tito Trinidad, you know, beat on his, you know, towards the end of his, his career when he's moving up and weight past 147. So it's, this is not a new story, you know, it's, and it's all about perspective. So from the perspective of, you know, Ben's team and, and, and they're, they're looking at me the way you said, but from me and, and my side and everyone who's around me and my team, we're looking at this as another, another step in our, our career. Brilliant. Chris, really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you on Fight Week. Anytime. Take care. Take care, Danny. And you.